trouble. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Praise Yahuwah! I'd like to welcome everyone to Kodesh Nation and to our Shabbat class. Brothers and sisters, praise Yahuwah. I'm going to be bringing a short lesson to you today entitled, Unless You Repent. Mm. Unless You Repent. Hallelujah. And so we're going to start from Luke chapter 13. In Luke chapter 13, we're going to read verses 1 through 5. The word reads, And some were present at that time reporting to him, to Yahushua now, about the Galileans whose blood Pilatus had mixed with their offerings. And Yahushua answering said to them, Do you think that these Galileans were worse sinners than all Galileans because they have suffered like this? I say to you, No, but unless you repent, you shall all perish in the same way. Or those eighteen on whom the tower in Shiloh fell and killed them. Do you think that they were greater offenders than all other men who dwelt at Jerusalem? I say to you, no. But unless you repent, you shall all perish in the same way. Praise Yahuwah. So in other words, Yahusha was saying, don't come telling me about what these other people are doing. As far as sinning, what about you? You know, unless you repent. But see, apparently, these people saw this act that was taking place about the Galileans whose blood Pilatus had mixed with their offerings, and they just saw that as just so abominable and so evil that they didn't even see their own condition. They didn't even see their own sins. And so that's what Yahushua was doing, was he was shining light uh, upon their own sins. Praise Yah. That uh, there is even a, a young man who had uh, come to Yahusha and he was asking him uh, to divide the inheritance, to make his brother divide the inheritance with him. And Yahusha said to them, uh, to both of them now, beware of covetousness. For a man's life for, uh, consists not in the abundance of things that he possesses. Praise Yah. So even the man that was uh, felt like he was bringing a righteous cause said, "You know, I'm gonna go to this man and I'm gonna because it, it, it's a righteous thing for for my brother to divide the inheritance with me." Mm -hmm. And he was told, "Beware of covetousness." In other words, I mean, what what is your motive? What is in your heart? Praise Yah. So I want to look at a couple of examples from the scriptures here. If we turn to Second Samuel, Second Samuel, chapter twelve. Second Samuel twelve. We're going to read verses one through twelve. This is after Daud had committed adultery with Bathsheba and had. Uriah the Hittite, her husband, killed. Second Samuel 12, starting in verse 1. Then Yahuwah sent Nathan to Daud, and he came to him and said to him, There are two men in one city, one rich and the other poor. The rich one had flocks and herds, very many. But the poor one had only one little ewe lamb, which he had bought and kept alive and it grew up with him and with his children together it ate of his own food and drank from his own cup and lay in his bosom and it was like a daughter to him and a traveler came to the rich man who refused to take from his own flock and from his own herd to prepare one for the wayfaring man who had come to him but he took the poor man's lamb and prepared it for the man who had come to him and the wrath of Daud burned greatly against the man. And he said to Nathan, As Yahuwah lives, the man who has done this is a son of death. Also, he has to repay fourfold for the land because he did this deed and because he had no compassion. And then Nathan said to Daud, You are the man. 
Thus said Yahuwah Elohim of Yashra'al, I anointed you sovereign over Yashra'al, and I delivered you from the hand of Shaul. And I gave you your master's house and your master's wives into your bosom, and gave you the house of Yashra'al and Yahuda. and if that were not enough, I also would have given you much more. Why have you despised the word of Yahuwah to do evil in his eyes? You have killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword, and his wife you took to be your wife, and you have killed him with the sword of the children of Ammon. And now the sword does not turn aside from your house, because you have despised me and have taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be your wife. Thus said Yahuwah, See, I am raising up evil against you from your own house, and shall take your wives before your eyes and give them to your neighbor, and he shall lie with your wives in the sight of this son. For you did it in secret, but I shall do this deed before all Yashra'al and before the son. Praise Yahuwah. And so when Daud had first committed uh, this sin, see, we talked about this last week. See, Daoud, he was in sin before uh, Bathsheba even arrived at his doorstep. Mm -hmm. Because when lust conceives, it brings forth sin. And sin, when it's finished, it brings forth death. See, lust had already conceived to the point where he made a decision based upon that conception of lust. By having uh, his servants call for uh, Bathsheba to come to him. So he's already in sin at that point. And then here he transgresses uh, by uh, committing adultery with a Bathsheba, laying with her. And then he adds onto his transgressions by having Uriah the Hittite killed and by basically living a lie. So it had escalated to iniquity at that point, wickedness. And that's the point at which Nathan had come to him. And here, Daoud had become so hardened in his sin, in his transgression, in his wickedness, that he couldn't even see himself in this parable that Nathan had brought to him. And he was so indignant of uh, the injustice that he heard uh, this man doing. And little did he realize that that man was him. Praise Yahuwah. And so that's what happens, you know, and, and especially, uh, especially if we have become hardened in sin, like Daoud had, to the point where here it's iniquity, it's wickedness, that that can blind us where we can't see. You know, we can't see ourselves. We can't see our own deeds. We only see the deeds of others, or uh, especially uh, you know, others that may be doing something that's displeasing to us. Praise Yahuwah. And so we see this. We see that Daoud, he didn't see himself until he got rebuked, and until Nathan had brought this thing out in the open. Now, Yeshayahu, Isaiah chapter 5. Isaiah chapter 5, and we are going to start in verse 18. Praise the Lord. Isaiah chapter now what I'm looking for here is where it's speaking about those who uh, they're waiting for the day of Yahuwah Praise Yahuwah. But Yahuwah is saying that this is a this is a day of darkness and not light. Praise Yahuwah. And so, you know, just the the whole point, praise Yah, is that you know, we talk about the last days, 
and you know we talk about how judgment is coming upon the earth and how you know we're waiting in anticipation of it you know we want to hasten its coming and you know, we we want it to come upon the land praise Yahuwah but you know we see in the scriptures you know, we see Yah rebuking that praise Yah you know you see right that uh Yah disfavoring that. Hallelujah. That I remember I was I was staying with a young man. And you know, this was during a time when we really thought the judgment was going to be coming on the earth and soon. And you know, this young man that, that he would he would always especially uh, be talking about nuclear judgment. That how nuclear judgment's coming, and how you know this certain cities are just going to go up in in smoke. You know, nuclear judgment. It's like he had an excitement about him because of it. Praise Yah. But Yah saying, no, we shouldn't be that way because see, if judgment does come like that, praise Yah, then uh, how do you know that you're not going to be caught up in it? You know, how do you know that? Um, Judgment's not going to be coming for you. You know, we have so many that preach about the tribulation, about the wrath of Yah and all the things that are happening, and there's almost like a gladness about it. But those things should bring sobriety to us, brothers and sisters, rather than gladness. Even the destruction of this country, which Yah has revealed that to many of us, that this country will be destroyed because of the sin, because of the wickedness, praise Yahuwah. But that's not something that we should rejoice over. That's not something that we should be um, just casual about. But that, that is an occasion for, it's an occasion for mourning. And the reason why it's an occasion for mourning is because a lot of our people are going to be caught up in that. It's going to be a lot of our people that are not going to answer the call to come out of her, my people. That ye be not a partaker of her sins, that ye not receive of her plagues. That's going to be the main reason to really mourn over this. Praise Yahuwah. And so, uh, the scripture passage I wanted to look at, I was mistaken, it's Amos. Not Isaiah, it's Amos chapter 5. Amos 5.18. 5, Amos 5.18. In Amos 5.18, the word reads, Woe to you who are longing for the day of Yahuwah. Longing now. Mm -hmm. What does the day of Yahuwah mean to you? It is darkness and not light. As when a man flees from a lion and a bear shall meet him. Or enter his house, rested his hand on the wall, and a serpent shall bite him. Is not the day of Yahuwah darkness and not light? Is it not very dark with no brightness in it? I have hated, I have despised your festivals, and I am not pleased with your assemblies. Though you offer me burnt offerings and your grain offerings, I do not accept them, nor do I look on your fatted, fattened peace offerings. Take away from me the noise of your songs, for I do not hear the sound of your stringed instruments, and let right ruling roll on like water, and righteousness like a mighty stream. Praise Yahuwah. This is the same people that are Waiting, longing for the day of Yahuwah. Praise Yah, but righteousness and right ruling are lacking in their midst. Yah is telling them, no, you don't want it to come. Not like you think you do. You don't want it to come because if it comes, then it's going to get you. Because Yahusha said, as a snare shall it come upon all men on the face of the earth. Praise Yahuwah. But what we're talking about is just this casual attitude towards sin and towards judgment where, praise Jehovah, well, we don't realize that the spotlight could be on us and on our sins. Mm -hmm. Now, Proverbs chapter 16. A couple of Proverbs here speak about just human nature, how we tend to be. Proverbs 16 
and verse 2. The word reads, All the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but Yahuwah weighs the spirits. Mm-hmm. That's powerful. It says all the ways. Oh, okay. It just says some. It says all the ways of a man are clean in his own eyes, but Yahuwah weighs the spirits. In other words, that Yahuwah has the ability to do what no other man has the ability to do. Mm-hmm. And there may be some things that no other man can see in us that Yah sees. All right. Chapter 21, Proverbs 21. And verse 2 again. Proverbs 21, 2. All a man's ways are right in his own eyes, but Yahuwah weighs the hearts. Once again, all a man's ways, right in his own eyes. See, this is what the people were like who Yahusha was dealing with, especially the religious leaders, scribes and Pharisees. Now he told them, Ye are they which justify yourselves before men, but Yahuwah knoweth your hearts. For that which is highly esteemed among man is abomination in the sight of Yahuwah. See, these men were covetous. They were justifying themselves before men, but they were covetous. And that's why he told them, no man can serve two masters. Love the one, hate the other. Praise Yahuwah. They didn't realize they were covetous, though. They didn't think they were covetous. See, Yahusha rebuked them for devouring widows' houses. And for a pretense, making long prayers, said that you will receive the greater damnation. In other words, that their motive wasn't to go in and, and minister to the widows. They knew that those widows were likely to give that money up if they, if they go in there and make a long, pretty prayer. And he called them out on that. Praise God. Psalms. Psalm 139. Psalm 139. Yah can see even what other people cannot see. Now, sometimes Yah can see some things, and sometimes other people can see some things. And so, you know, we're going to uh, we're going to see that here in just a moment. The Psalm 139. This is Daoud speaking, verses 23 and 24. Search me, O Al, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. And see if an idolatrous way is in me, and lead me in the way everlasting. See, Daoud had enough wisdom to know that there are some things that only Yah can see. And that Yah needed to search his heart to see if there is any wicked way, any idolatrous way in him. Because he knew that he could not trust himself in order to know if there is any way like that in him. Because the proverb says that he that trusts in his own heart is a fool. Isn't that what the world tells us? Listen to your heart. I think there's a secular song called Listen to Your Heart. That's what they tell you. You gotta follow your heart. You gotta listen to your heart. That's why people are getting in so much trouble today. That's why people are making shipwreck of their lives because they're listening to their heart. He that trusteth in his own heart is a fool. We need to regularly be asking Yah to search us, know our heart, try us, and know our thoughts, even our thoughts. Praise Yahuwah. See if there's anything in us that is displeasing to Him. See, that's what the people should have done that were bringing this stuff to Yahusha in Luke chapter 13. Praise Yahuwah. And see, Daoud, Daoud wasn't praying this, you know, back when he was hardened in his sin now. Praise Yah. But then he's definitely praying it here. So Daoud, he, he, he learned his lesson. Yah allowed that testimony to be, you know, put in the book for all to see. But also we see that he learned his lesson. He bounced back. And he died with a righteous testimony. Praise Yahuwah. Now, let's, uh, let's turn a couple chapters forward. Psalm 141. Remember how I said that some things only Yah can see, and then some things that Yah can see, but others can see, but you can't see. Talking about unless you repent. That is the title of this lesson. Unless you repent. Psalm 141. Verse 5, let the righteous one smite me, 
or reprove me in kindness. It is oil on my head. Let my head not refuse it. My prayer is still against their evil deeds. Praise Yahuwah. So we see the attitude and disposition here of Daoud. Where he says, let the righteous one smite me or reprove me in kindness. He's inviting that. He wants that. Praise Yahuwah. Now, there would be no need for a righteous person to smite him or reprove him if he was able to smite himself. Mm -hmm. If he was able to reprove himself, why would he need a righteous person? What he's talking about here is that somebody who can see him when he can't see himself. Mm -hmm. Praise Yahuwah. But let him be righteous now. Because, I mean, there may be someone who can see some things about you that you don't see, but they're not righteous. Praise Yahuwah. And their motives aren't right. Their motives are not to restore you. But their motive is to take advantage of you. Their motive is to get one up on you. That's why Yasser, rejoice not when your enemy falls. Praise Yahuwah. And don't rejoice in anybody's calamities. Praise Yah, but see, see, some people, there, there are some people who you don't want to smite you. Praise Yah, because they, because they will, they will smite you out of wickedness and not out of righteousness. See, if people are wicked, if people are envious, if they're jealous, praise Yah, then, you know, you could, you could find yourself in error or in sin. And they, they won't try to restore you, praise Yah. They'll just uh, they'll, they'll spread the word about you. They'll make sure other people know, so that they're seen in a greater light than you're seen in, praise Yah. See, that's not that's not restoration, brothers and sisters. Praise Yah. We're to restore one another in a spirit of meekness. Hallelujah. And just like Yahusha said that that. If your brother sins against you, go and show him his fault between you and him alone. If he has heard you, you have gained your brother. Look at that. You've gained your brother. So, that's the motive. If someone has offended you, somebody has sinned against you, your motive should be to gain your brother. Not to blow off steam. Not to give him or her a piece of your mind but to gain your brother. Praise Yahuwah. So let the righteous smite me. Praise Yahuwah. And, and if that's not something that we're experiencing in our lives, we need to pray, Yah, put righteous people around me who have the ability, the discernment, the wisdom to be able to smite me when I need it. To be able to reprove me in kindness when I need it. Praise Yahuwah. That should be our prayer. Praise Yah. We should, when we look for fellowship, we shouldn't always look for people that just uh, look up to us and just uh, adore us and think we're the neatest things in sliced bread. Praise Yahuwah. We should be looking for the wise. Praise Yah. Looking for the elders in the gate. Looking for the mothers of Yashra'al. Looking for those that can help us get somewhere. Spiritually. Praise Yahuwah. Praise Yah. Let the righteous smite me. Hallelujah. And so unless you repent. If we're not careful now, especially being in this Torah walk. <coughs> see, we can find ourselves walking in these Torah truths. We see that a lot of these religious people around us, they don't. They reject Torah, especially in Christianity. And so that can breed an overconfidence in us. Praise Yah. You know, as I look on social media and I see uh, Israelites and just constantly going hard, going hard, going hard on uh, uh, sun god worship. Sunday Sabbath keepers, sun god worship, and just going hard, going hard, going hard. Praise Yah. 
And, you know, in number one, number one, the way they're keeping Shabbat is not right. Sure. And then number two, they're putting themselves in, in, they're putting themselves in, in uh, uh, a hard predicament there because Yahusha said the measure you judge, you'll be judged. The measure you meet, it'll be measured back to you. Praise Yahuwah. And so as they judge, it'll be judged back to them. But, praise Yahuwah, that that can cause a blindness when all you see is these sun god worshipers. Praise Yah. You may not see that, number one, you're not doing it right. And then, number two, you may have other stuff in your life, in your heart, that you just don't see. Praise Yah. Because you got one truth that you're just exalting so high that that's all you seem to want to talk about. Praise Yah. And so, we can't be that way, brothers and sisters, that Yah is bringing us to perfection. Praise Yah. In fact, let me... Let's go to Daniel. I want, to, I want to bring out something here. But He's bringing us unto perfection. He's preparing us as His bride. But in Daniel, Daniel chapter 11 is what I want to look at here. Daniel chapter 11. We're going to start in verse 31. It says, And strong ones shall arise from him and profane the mikdash, the stronghold, and shall take away that which is continual and place the abomination that lays waste. And by flatteries he shall profane those who do wickedness against the covenant, but the people who know their Elohim shall be strong and shall act. And those of the people who have insight shall give understanding to many, and they shall stumble by sword and flame and by captivity and plundering for days. And when they stumble, they shall be helped, a little help, but many shall join to them by flatteries. And some of those who have insight shall stumble to refine them and to cleanse them and to make them white until the time of the end, for it is still for an appointed time. Hallelujah. Now with that, uh, jump to chapter 12. I'm going to read a similar passage. In chapter 12, in verse 9, And I'm going to read verses 9 and 10 here. It says, And he said, Go, Daniel, for the words are hidden and sealed until the time of the end. Many shall be cleansed and made white and refined, but the wicked shall do wickedness, and none of the wicked shall understand, but those who have insight shall understand. So, brothers and sisters, what we're seeing here is that this end time is going to be a time of refining, of purging, of cleansing, and we even see the process by which Yah is going to do some of this. Now, this is talking about those who have insight, those that are, you know, teaching, preaching, sharing the word, praise Yah, doing a work for Yah, but... We see that it, it said in some of those, I'm going, to, I'm going to read 35 and 11 again. Some of those who have insight shall stumble to refine them and to cleanse them and to make them white until the time of the end. So even when we're going forth and doing the work for Yah, Yah is still refining us. Yah is still cleansing us. Yah is still purifying us. Praise Yahuwah. He's going to do that to the time of the end until we are ready to meet Him. Praise Yah. So when we see error, when we see fault in one another or others, you know, we need to look upon that with sobriety. 
We need to say, Yah, search me, know my heart, try me, know my thoughts. You know, maybe I don't see myself like this other person doesn't see themselves. Praise Yahuwah. Because where, wherever we're at in our um, in our walk with Yah, the, the refining process is still going on. You remember in Revelation, where it talks about just all those people that were that showed up, you know, in the Shamaim and and you know the the Malachim said, These are they which have come out of great tribulation and have washed their robes and made them white in the blood of the Lamb. So these people were in a continual cleansing process until they were taken out. Praise Yah. And then we see at the end of Revelation where it says that you know the bride has made herself ready. Why does it say the bride has made herself ready? Because the bride's not ready now. The bride's not ready right now. There needs to be some purging, cleansing, purifying. And, you know, I know it's not comfortable to talk about these kind of things, but Yah shows us His process here. Praise Yah. Praise Yah. There, I mean, there are going to be some uh, trying circumstances here. Stumbling uh, by sword, by flame, by captivity, by plundering. Now, this is talking about those of the people who have insight and people that are giving uh, understanding to me. Yah is going to allow some of these things to happen to some of us. Praise Yah. And that's why that we need to allow Yah to purge us, cleanse us, and purify us as much as possible now. And don't leave a lot to be purged and refined and, and purified in that time. Mm -hmm. Praise Yah. Because in that time, His method of purging it out can be pretty severe. And so, uh, you know, if we judge ourselves, we won't be judged. Let my cleansing, let my purging, let my purifying be now. And not during there at that time. But you know what? If it has to be in this fashion here that we see about in Daniel, he'll give us the favor to go through it. Whether it's sword or flame or captivity, imprisonment, whatever the case may be, praise Yahuwah. He will give us the favor to go through it. Hallelujah. Because some of us are going to face those things, brothers and sisters. I mean, that's no joke. Praise Yah. And so Yah is good. Let's examine ourselves. Let's examine our hearts. Let's ask Yah to search us and to know our hearts, try us and know our thoughts, see if there be any wicked or idolatrous way in us. Praise Yahuwah. Let's pray to Yah. Let the righteous smite me and reprove me in kindness. Pray that Yah smite you by the hand of a uh, or the mouth of a righteous person. Praise Yah. Not a lot of people pray that. Not a lot of people want that. Because in our pride, we want it to be us and Yah. Yah, speak to me in an audible voice and tell me what's wrong with me. Mm -hmm. And don't show anybody. See, it's pride. Yah doesn't do things like that. Hallelujah. We're helpers one to another. Hallelujah. See, sometimes it may be like this word that I'm given. There may be something in this word that I'm given that's smiting your heart and revealing some sin in your life. Now, I don't know who you are, praise Yah, and sometimes Yah does it like this. Sometimes it could be someone who's physically in your midst, and Yah just gives them discernment, and then they just approach you and start dealing with you. See, that's what we don't want, but that's what we need. Praise Yahuwah. So accept you, or unless you repent. So Yahushua told those people, unless you repent. Don't tell me about them. Unless you repent, mm -hmm. you shall all perish in the same way. Hallelujah. And so with that, I will say, Shalom. Shalom.